Are you looking to invest into real estate? Are you a high income professional? You're a medical student, you're a resident, fellow, and looking to purchase your first property or to purchase a real estate property? In this video, we're gonna talk all about real estate. So we are here at the model home for investment property that I am in the process of purchasing. We're gonna meet my real estate agent and he's gonna show us around this home here. What's up, Jason? Hey, what's going on, Dr. Webb? How you doing? Doing well, man. How are you? Good. Uh, tell the viewers who you are and kind of what you do. Okay. My name is uh, Jason Gutierrez. I'm with Berkshire Hathaway and I'm a broker associate. Been a real estate agent for 13 years. Good. Awesome, man. And thank you for showing us around this property. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about this, this property here? Yeah. We are in the northwest part of San Antonio uh, in Stony Creek, 500 homes here. This is a three bed, two bath. So just a really, really nice spot. Hey, Dr. Webb, let me just show you around the master bedroom right here so you can take a look. Very, very nice. Good. Well, uh, I wanted to ask you, what are your thoughts on, how do you decide what's a good investment property? I look at something, uh, you know, being a doctor, very busy with your practice, something that's a peace of mind. A house like this, a newer home, something where you're gonna make some cash flow on your monthly income. Yeah. If something happens, it's gonna be covered under warranty. So that's the advantage of buying like a new property versus like an older one. That's right. You don't have to worry about like the AC breaking down or like, you know, some structural problem with the house. That's right. Otherwise it's under warranty. Under warranty, something happens, we call DL Horton uh, or whoever the builder is. And again, it's probably something minor, minor door adjustment, something simple. <laughs> All right, Jason, so there are a lot of different types of loans out there. I mean, conventional loans, FHA, FHA loans, VA loans. Can you talk a little bit about those different types of loans and you know, how does one person choose one type of loan versus the other? Yeah, I, I think the biggest, the biggest part is uh, for the audience is a lot of people are fearful to even find out where they're at with the loans. That's number one. Uh, you always wanna get with the lender and find out where you're at. So being in the military, prior military, you got the VA loan people don't know or individuals don't know, you. I've seen BAs get two to three homes under one loan. Wow. So you can exercise that option. Uh, you have a conventional loan, a USDA loan, an FHA loan. Mm -hmm. And your property here actually qualifies for a USDA loan, mm -hmm. which is zero down. Yeah, and I get this question a lot also, like how can I get into a property with no money down? Yeah. One way is like for a physician's loan where physicians, whether you're a resident or fellow, uh, attending physician, yeah. there are companies out there that will loan you money yes. with pretty much little to That's no money right. down, as well as uh, no PMI or private mortgage um, insurance. That's right. Yeah. Um, and, and for the USDA loan, you got to make under a certain amount, I think 100000 a year. And there's a future bank that BBVA, which is now Truist, who can help out with that. Those are one of the banks that help out with the physician loans. Good. All right, Dr. Webb, I got a question for you. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, why choose real estate to invest your money in? Well, wow, that's, that, that's a great question. You know, I personally think it's good to diversify your funds. Okay. So a lot of physicians, they make really good money, but um, at the end of their careers, they may be at a point where they really haven't put money aside to you know, invest or to live off in retirement. So I'm taking a non-traditional route and you know, trying to diversify. So I think real estate is a great way to diversify your money and your income. And also from a tax standpoint, being able to you know, reduce your tax bill, real estate is a great investment to do that. Okay, how many more houses do you think you're gonna get before you retire? Personally, I my goal is 50 doors. And when I say doors, that's properties. Okay. Uh, you know, single family, you know, multi-family homes. Okay. Uh, because I, I think by the time I retire, I wanna be able to have these properties that provide cash flow. Okay. Every month you have $500 from this property, $800 from this property, 1,000 from that property. If you have 50 of those, Jeez. that's that's a good substantial amount of money in retirement. Having your money all in one bucket, I've always been taught that you should not put all of your money in one bucket. So having some in real estate, having some in index funds, having some in 
and different EFTs or different retirement accounts, brokerage accounts. I think it's good to just diversify overall. Real estate has risks associated with it, but I look at it as a future kind of long term. You know, what will this house do? How would it appreciate over yeah. time? And then being able to just pay it off eventually and just cash flowing. That's my goal. I think that's great. Yep. Okay, and medical school is so, so expensive. Two, three hundred thousand dollars worth of loans. Do you think, A, should a student pay off their loan, mm. student loans before buying a property, or should they just go straight into it? That's a, that's a tough, that's a loaded question. Most medical students are graduating medical school these, these days with $300,000, $400,000 in debt. I think with the student loan interest kind of pause and waiver, where it's 0%, I mean, that's a no-brainer. Oh, yeah. I mean, what's cheaper than you know, saving, being able to save money than 0%? I think as the interest rate waiver expires, then you have to figure out if your interest rate is going to be 9% or 10%, can you actually gain something or acquire something that's going to bring you a higher percentage than that? So for the last two, three years, it's, you know, it's no brain. You should purchase real estate. But as the waiver of the next you know, few months, January 2023, when it expires, um, if you can um, kind of acquire your you, all of your student loans and uh, put them all together, consolidate them, and get a really low interest rate. I think invest it in, in stocks and mutual funds, you know, and also real estate may be a great idea. Okay, so buying a home. Yes. Good. Yep, good. Absolutely. Okay. That's good. All right. So I got a couple questions from YouTube from people that wanted to know more about real estate and investing. And the question is from Jason523. What is your investing strategy for retirement, traditional 401k, IRA plans, real estate, any crypto? Do you have a retirement age? Well, that's a, that's a really good question. When, when, when I'm thinking about retirement, I'm actually thinking about ways that I can supplement my income and also my lifestyle at that point. And there are a lot of different ways to approach retirement, and I am not an expert in this by any ways, but real estate is a great way to do that. If you worked in medicine as a physician, PA, nurse practitioner for the next 10 years, and you have a property that you purchase at the beginning of your time, well, that property is going to appreciate in value. Let's say you purchase that property for $200,000 in 2010, and in 2020, that same property is $375,000. Well, that's a large appreciation, money that you have that can be used for retirement. Other retirement vehicles, you know, you have your 401ks, your SEP IRAs for self-employed individuals, the pension plans. Well, you should definitely max out all of those retirement plans first and then try to think of other ways that you can diversify your portfolio, such as a brokerage account, mutual funds, index funds, uh, investing into real estate funds or EFTs. And all of those are great ways to diversify your portfolio. So we just got finished touring the model home, and now we're going to go check out the actual property that I'm in the process of purchasing. They're still building the property. I'm really looking forward to seeing some updates. It's been a few weeks since I've been here, and we're gonna get more information about why you should be investing into real estate. Okay, so yeah, here's the investment property right here in the corner, getting close to finishing up. It should be ready for you by the uh, end of the year. Yeah. And uh, we'll go ahead and get it back on the market, get a tenant in inside, and it's gonna be ready to go. So nice, second part of the community here, remember only 500 homes. I looked last night, no homes for rent right now. So yours will probably be the first one for rent and they'll be ready to go. Awesome. So I'm super excited about let's that. Let's check it out. All right, let's do it. All right. All right, Dr. Webb, here we go. Your home almost done. Uh, probably in the last two stages here. Uh -huh. So just corner lot, very nice. So let's take a look to, to see what it looks like inside. As far as an appreciation for the future, that's a slam dunk, yep. hands down. Cash flow, because of the rates, we got a good rate going with this builder, yep. and even as an investment going with the new builder, you, you were able to lock in the 4.9 rate, when rates for investors are about almost 7% right now. Is 20% typical for investors? Uh, 
Yes, 20% is typical. Gets rid of the PMI, and PMI is just that insurance in case you, that goes into a pool of money in case you were to foreclose. That PMI just, you, you never get the credit for it. Good. Dr. Webb, like we said, we here we're at the last completion, last stages of it. Uh, we're just gonna put the granite on there, put the paint, the texture. So it's a really, really good home. Most homes, because they caught, they uh, try to cut the cost, only have one car garage. Mm -hmm. This one has a two, so it's a single family, right under uh, 1,500 square feet. Good. Very, very nice vinyl plank flooring. Just a really good home yep. for a, a family with three. Let's say someone has no real estate knowledge whatsoever. Yeah. They wanted to get into real estate, either to buy their first property or, you know, put some money to use. You know, as a high income professional, you have to find ways to not only lower your taxable income, yeah, that's right. but also find some retirement vehicles. Real that's estate is great for that. How can people get into real estate? Yeah, I think uh, the first thing is getting with a great agent. Uh, someone that's knowledgeable in the area, someone that's not gonna leave you when stuff goes wrong, that's important. Secondly is, let's find out where you're at, right? Let's get with the bank and let's see what needs to get done because you mentioned those student loans earlier. People are afraid. I run into a lot of people that just say, it's not time yet. And um, it's not time, we're not wanting to do it. And we're just not at that moment. So I think getting over that fear um, and go ahead and pull, pull the trigger. And whether it's a multifamily home or a duplex, I think if it was me in my first home, go for a duplex or a fourplex because you can put three and a half percent down and get it. Yeah, we actually looked at a duplex recently, but for the students out there, you know, I think reading a lot of books. I listen to a lot of podcasts, read a lot of books. YouTube is a great source. Just talking to your mentors, like how did you get into real estate? What could I do to that's right. kind of get into it as an investor? You know, I encourage it you know, to everyone that's out there. And, you know, I want to use my platform to encourage more people to get into real estate. So I appreciate it, Jason. Thank you. And, uh, you know, thank you for showing us around the, uh, the property. Look forward to uh, finishing. Absolutely. The property. Yes. Thank you.